What I love about drag is it's so liberating, it's so free, and it's so spiritual kind of thing. Because like the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, they're so free, and they're so unique, they're so brave to do that kind of art. Because we are living in the societies where like boundaries and boundaries and like cages are still putting on us every day kind of thing. And I feel like drag, there's no limitation, there's nothing holding us back while doing drag. This is the Belongings podcast series, produced by the ASEAN Soji Caucus with the support of Voice. Belongings is part of the Southeast Asian Queer Cultural Festival 2021. The series name has three elements. B means to exist. It shines the light on the existence and identity of the LGBTIQ. Longing is inspired by the word karinduan in Bahasa Indonesia or Bahasa Melayu and pangungulila in Filipino. It's the yearning for a region that is caring, inclusive, and respectful of diversity. And lastly, belonging. It stands as a reminder that the LGBTIQ people have always been part of the ongoing memory of the Southeast Asian region. In this episode, we talk to Lok Huynh, more popularly known as Babel, a drag artist from Vietnam. To be queer in Vietnam, it's an interesting experience because Vietnam societies have a really like open mind about being queer or being um, in the LGBTQ community. But what we are still facing with the um, backlash, the um, discriminations from some parts of societies and within the community. There are still people are spreading hatred and bullying the queer community. And even now, um, being queer is still like a topic to be discussed about, even though some people are really have an open mind about it. But you can clearly see that Vietnam societies are divided into like two parts. Ones are really friendly with the queer and ones are really against the queer community. I personally think one of the biggest challenges we're facing is maybe the lack of information. Because for me, as a queer person, person living in the biggest cities of a country, I get to studies about the knowledge about like queer community and like so GSC kind of thing. But there are many parts of our countries that don't get to know the knowledge, the academic information about being queer. And they're just seeing queer as something like a disease they are unfortunately have or like being chosen by the God kind of thing. When I was in like primary school, from first to fifth grade, I was a big fan of Girls' Generation. They are a K-pop group. Their um, colors are pink. So back then, my, I used to have a lot of pink school objects, like my pen, my ruler, my pencil case, and my keychain and my braces kind of thing. They're all pink. It's simply just because I like my girls' groups kind of thing. But my classmates, they are usually make fun of me being like, oh, you're so sissy. Oh, you're so fam because you're using pink. And once they've joking around and like they pull they make my braces like break off kind of thing it just snatched in half and when I got into like secondary schools there was one time when I go to the toilet and when I get into the closet suddenly like a big splash of water coming down on me like from the above and people outside are laughing aha oh god you queer you faggot kind of thing and like I was so shock at the moment and I, and I was like how could people treat me like this and like there's a lot of thing going on but like that is one time that I get the biggest discrimination or like the bully in my life. I am lucky enough to not get being bitten or being hit just for being queer. And like today, those events impact me in a kind of a good way for me to know who I am and like and know what my mission is. And because of that, I have been a social activist since like 2016 to now. So that's kind of like a motivation for me to like fighting against discrimination and hatred in the societies. Babel found an outlet for her creativity and social activism through the art of drag. What I love about drag is it's so liberating, it's so free, and it's so spiritual kind of thing. Because like I first watched drag since I was in grade 10, and the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, they're so free, and they're so unique, they're so brave to do that kind of art. That's what I love about drag.
because we are living in the societies where like binaries and boundaries and like cages are still putting on us every day kind of thing. And I feel like drag, there's no limitation. There's nothing holding us back while doing drag. I want to break out of my normal days because like I used to be like really closeted, really shy about my appearance, about my body kind of thing. But but since I started doing drag, I start to learn more about self-love. I start to learn more about being free, being liberating, and so that's why I started to just doing drag since 2018 till now. For me, I have two types of drag. First drag is like the, the modern drag that you see on like drag race with RuPaul's. Drag queens are with the big hair, big bodies, big personalities, and people in Vietnam perceive that. Like I said, some are really like open about it, and they be like, "Yes, queen, yes, that's so inspiring." But some will be. They're, they're making a fuss and being too mouthy, being too sissy. But if you watch my videos for the festival, I talk about bom and bom in Vietnam is from Mu Bom Roy. And like from my perspective, that is a kind of drag form in Vietnam. And when it, we talk about that kind of drag, people are really like respect and they are really like into it because like that, that's in kind of art form that have been going along with our histories and our culture and it is something to, to do with religion so it is getting a lot of support and respect even though it's being like nowadays um not many people are talking about especially the, the young generations but it's still thriving kind of thing as babel learned more about herself better through drag she hopes that the queer community can grow by knowing more about its history and culture. From a perspective, the queer movement in Vietnam delaying kind of thing because like even though throughout Vietnam we have a lot of queer groups and queer organizations working, but we work like more individually. We don't have a real connection, I believe. So for me, if we still want to pushing the movement forward, we need to find a way to um, reconnect and to the whole nations, all the queers, organizations and groups to work together to keep pushing forward. I don't know why, but like we tend to believe the queer is something that, that are roots from the, for the Western, that being brought here by the colonizers, by the white people. But I believe that if we spend some, some more time to read more documentaries, like tracing back of our histories, of our roots, of our culture, we will see that queers are like everywhere in Southeast Asia. Like if we do some more research, we will know clearly that we are, as a queer young generation, have been part of Southeast Asia for a very long time that have long been evolved with the histories and, and the cultures for a long for a long way. Not just something being brought here for about like 100 or 200 years. We have been existed for longer than that. My hope and dreams for queer community in my countries, I think the most important is changes in law kind of thing because even though we are progressing, but like I want someday, it, it will come sooner than we think. We can marry who we want, we, we can be whoever we want, we can do whatever we want, as long as we're not doing any harm. And I want the queer community in Vietnam to know more about themselves, know more about their originalities in the country's cultures, histories, and everything else. And I want them to, to be free and like to be whoever they want. To all my queer siblings in Southeast Asia or all over the world, first of all, love yourself. Because, because like as RuPaul said, if you can love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And from love yourself, you will know who you are. And when you know who you are, you will know what is your value, what is your purpose of living and the message of you existing on earth. And never give up on that. And just keep doing what you love and you will achieve success and happiness in the future. To listen to more Belongings podcast episodes, follow the ASEAN Soji Caucus on Facebook or Twitter at ASEAN Soji and on Instagram at ASEAN Soji Caucus. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons license.